Hi SQL friends, welcome to another tutorial from SQL Maestros. Just like most of my content, this demo, this tutorial is also based on a question that keeps coming in forum all the time. People are doing a lot of query tuning stuff and there are a lot of metrics flying around everywhere inside SQL Server. More than 200 to 300 dynamic management views, so many perf perf counters, performance monitor counters, etc. There is so much of metrics to record. And on top of that, add things like weight types and weight stats and things get so complicated. And then to this entire mix comes the execution plan with a lot of numbers flying around in the execution plan. So people uh, have been asking this question in the forum about the operator cost that you see in the execution plan. I'm not talking about the query plan cost. Well, there is another video that I recorded for our members only section in the YouTube and for our premium members on sqlmaestros.com. What is the query plan cost and how it is computed? That video is available in the members section uh, and on sqlmaestros.com. This video, this tutorial is about the operator cost that you see in the execution plan. Let me explain you. So I'm using AdventureWorks 2016 and let's fire a simple select statement on person dot person. Actual execution plan is turned on and you would expect that there will be a clustered index scan. Let the query get executed. Done. Jump over to the execution plan now. You can see the clustered index scan operator out there. You have seen execution plans before, right? These execution plan, uh, they consist of multiple iterators like scanning, seeking, sorting, aggregates, join, hash match, so many different iterators. There are more than 100 iterators. Now each iterator has a cost associated with it. So let's take the cursor over clustered index scan. Let's zoom in. What you will see here is estimated operator cost. So the question is, how is this cost coming? How is this computed? Where is it derived from? So this demo is about that. Let's get started and let's get into the depth of how this number is, is getting computed. Now, when you look at the estimated operator cost, let me remove these lines. How do I do that? Okay, let's zoom in once more. Now, the answer to this is actually very simple. Where is this operator cost coming from? Answer is very, very straightforward. The operator cost that you see here, 2.8697, comes from adding up the IO cost and the CPU cost. Demo done. Tutorial is done. Just add up the IO cost and CPU cost. That makes it the operator cost. But you can trust me. And you would be wondering, well, this video will not be as simple as just adding up two numbers and giving you the operator cost. Well, yes, you add up the IO cost and CPU cost, it makes up the operator cost. But then we all know what we want to find out next is how is the IO cost getting computed and how is the CPU cost getting computed? If you know that, that makes a lot of sense because then you know how is the overall, the total operator cost being is being derived. Okay, so let's get to the details of how is the IO cost getting computed, how the CPU cost gets computed, and then you add up these two numbers that makes up the operator cost. Okay, so select start from person dot person. First, look, let's look into the CPU cost. What is the CPU cost? I have noted the noted down the CPU cost here, which is 0 0.0221262. Okay, is that the number there? Yes, that's the number. This is the CPU cost 0 0.0221262. Where is it coming from? The mathematics for computing the CPU cost is this. Let me explain you. The total number of records, if you look at the result set there, let me zoom in here. There are 19,972 records. There is a cost to access each record from the table. There is a cost to access each row. So the optimizer has some hard coded numbers. The cost to access the first row is this, which is 0 0.0001581. That's the cost to access the first row. And the cost to access all the remaining rows, the subsequent rows after the first row is this, which is 0 0.00011. 
So if you add all this up, the cost of the first one, then this number multiplied by the remaining rows, the remaining rows will be 19,971 rows, which is 9972 minus one. So if you add this up, this will bring you to 0 0.0221262. That is the CPU cost. Okay, so you know now how things are getting computed inside the optimizer. These are hard coded numbers. All right, I'll quickly repeat the cost to access the first row, the cost to access all the remaining rows. So you take this number, multiply this by all the remaining rows, except that first row, add this up. This gives you the CPU cost. Okay, so first part of the puzzle is solved. You get the CPU cost. Now, Next one is the IO cost. Where is the IO cost coming from? How is, is it getting derived? Let's do this once more. Jump over to the execution plan. I have recorded the IO cost here, which is 2.84757. Jump over to the execution plan. Let's see if this is the number. IO cost is 2.84757. Recorded this. How is this number computed? So let me get to the formula first, then I'll talk about this DMV. So the formula to access or to compute the IO cost is as follows. The data in a table is stored in pages. In SQL Server, each page is eight kilobytes and you have all these rows pumped into pages. Eight pages together make an extent. So an extent is 64K. To access the first page in a table, the first data page, the cost is this. This is what we call as the magical number, right? Again, hard-coded uh, number there, hard-coded value. 0 0.003125, this is the cost to access the first page. Now, this first page may have like 100 rows, 200 rows, 300 rows, we don't know, but this is the cost to access the first page. But then this table has 20,000 rows approximately, so there are obviously more than one page. The cost to access all the remaining pages is this, just like what we did with the CPU. So the formula is this cost, which is the cost to access the first page, and then find out the cost to access the remaining pages, which is this one multiplied by the remaining pages. So how many pages are there? You know the number of rows, which is 19,972, but how many pages? Well, there are so many DMVs that can give you that information. The most, the good one <laughs> is DMDB partition stats. If you look into this DMV and just extract the attributes that we want here, the row count and the page count, and pass on the object ID person dot person for our clustered index out there, let's go and execute you will see 19,972 rows are stored in 3841 pages. This is the leaf level, right? 3841 pages. So let's come back to the formula once again. The cost to access the first page is this. The cost to access the remaining pages is this multiplied by 3840. 3841 minus 1, 3840 will give you the IO cost 2.84757. Is that right? Let's execute this and get it. Yes, 2.84757. So the sixth thing gets rounded up. All right. Now you know how is the CPU cost being derived. You know how the IO cost is being derived. What is our formula to get the operator cost? Your operator cost is this one, 2.8697 add up the CPU cost and the IO cost and it will give you 2.8697. Let's do this. There you go. 2.8697 rounded up to the highest decimal place. 2.8697 matches up. There you go. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you enjoyed this learning. I'm sure you have loved this, right? How do you compute the operator cost? Add up the IO cost and the CPU cost. And you also know now how is the IO cost and CPU cost getting computed. Do give this video a thumbs up, put down some comments in the comment section, share this with your friends and colleagues. And yes, friends, do check out sqlmaestros.com. Lot of deep dive content there uh, available. And the most recent one is the performance tuning masterclass, which I delivered a few weeks back. The entire recording, HD recording, 40 hours of content is now available. You can subscribe and start watching instantly and you get lifetime access. That's the big deal. 
All right, friends. See you soon in another video. Happy sequel. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sequelmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.